What's up, you guys? Hey, it's John with Vision 360 Fire Financials. Today, we're going to be covering some awesome utility dividend stocks that you guys should be really holding, especially in these high inflationary times, and also where we're seeing huge commodity spikes, whether across electricity, gases, oils, etc. These companies are propelled to profit immensely over this upcoming time. So, let's cover. I'm going to break these down into sections, or else it's going to be really long. We have 18 different companies to cover. Obviously, I'm not going to cover all 18. We're going to split them up either into five or nine. Depends on how long it goes to cover five. I may split it up more. All right, let's begin. So, PGE. This is not PGNE, like in California. This is PGE. It's actually from my home state, Portland General Electric. Um, don't get, be distraught that it just says Portland because they service a huge, large area uh, of operation besides just Portland, right? Portland has a whole lot of issues, right? That dividend yield is a pretty nice 3.17%. Uh, and we also look and we see that in April of 21, they raised it by 5.5%. Starting price, current price, I should say, is about $54.29 right now. And this market cap is just under $5 billion. So, pretty neat. And then we can look over here. Basically, what they do, guys, they're electric utility uh, I wouldn't call them a conglomerate, but they sell power and transmission uh, distribution, uh, but they sell basically power generation to even other small co-ops and utilities in the area as well. And uh, PGE is at the higher end, so like they cost more typically. Uh, just knowing from being around the service area and stuff myself, I know that it costs more typically, but they are a pretty good, reliable company with fixing issues and everything else like that. We see their payout ratio is 62% with the forward PE of 61%. And I see that also going lower, especially with the price increases of power, right? So like the generation side of it, the house, but also the consumer side of basically to be able to do a pass through, to be able in all of these, to be able to pass through those expenses to the consumer, uh, good or bad, right? Uh, basically to not feel the effects themselves too much. So this shouldn't really destroy anything on the dividend side of the house or the cash flow because obviously it'll just be made up in increased prices. We can also see that they've maintained this dividend growth streak for 15 years. So not bad, decade and a half. That's actually when they really started paying the dividend. We see that they increased it during the recession. That's a good sign. I always like to look for that metric, and we see over the last 10 years, it's increased 5% year-over-year in dividend growth. So, phenomenal there. And we see the payouts have increased over time. That's another good indication of this company, the strength of it. We see that it is on par with the utility sector for the PE ratio. Uh, as a whole, is 19.4. It's 19.3, so it's actually slightly under. And then we can also look and see that the earnings over, like I said, I mentioned it earlier, 61% for PE. So if it's usually below 70 to 80%, I like to see that metric. Uh, just it's, it's a good sign, right? We don't want that payout ratio to be too high or else then we could worry about the dividend getting cut. And we see the earnings per share has gone up steadily over time, as you would imagine with the utility, just because it's something that is basically, uh, like I said, a pass-through company and uh, it, all their costs and pricing is built into what the market is doing. So if energy is costing more to produce and go, et cetera, you know, to provide, the consumer is going to end up paying that anyways on the end, end of it. We see here the shares outstanding also have gone up steadily over time, not like a crazy amount though. And that's also just speaks to mainly the company expanding and growing more and more. We see the return on equity has been uh, fairly normal for the most part. Nothing like super stellar or crazy, but like I said, uh, going forward, this company has a lot to offer. So I see those numbers probably even creeping up, especially over the next few years, as electric uh, utility companies are going to be a huge investment, especially going forward with like greener energy. So we see the operating margin, not terrible. Uh, it's about close to the threshold we want to see and we can also see the debt so debt utilities always take on by the way For any of these utilities because it is built into uh, their depreciation scale on their power grid So all of that stuff is factored into the pricing with the consumers, etc So I don't see that as a huge issue that actually helps deleverage them in some ways on the tax side of the things 
Let me see the interest coverage as well. It's right about on par, slightly a little low, but not terrible. But let's go to our next one, guys. All right, guys, so the next one is the American Electric Power, ticker symbol AEP. And it is one of the America's largest regulated electric utilities, and it serves over 5 million customers across the states, 11 different states. So Ohio, Texas, West Virginia, Virginia, Oklahoma, Indiana, and Kentucky. Also, if you guys are curious, a link down below will give you my entire dividend portfolio. I have 100 different holdings in there. They're all in all the different sectors, pretty much, for the most part and highly diversified. I've thrown out any different companies that have cut their dividend during the recession, if they paid a dividend then, and uh, pretty much vetted them very heavily. And also these are companies that are here to perform and even perform during their times of recession. It's stuff that is needed all the time, right? Industrial side, consumer side, uh, medical side, you know, all that kind of stuff. Even discretionary stuff people still spend money on. So, we see this one has a starting dividend yield of 3.28%, and we see that it has a pretty good growth, 5.4%. That starting price today is just over $95 with a market cap. This one is quite a bit bigger, of just under $48 billion. All right. We see here the forward P is at 63%, so that's definitely good, well below the 75%. And we see that a dividend growth rate of 17 years. So two years more than the last one and they maintained their dividend during 07, 08 crash, which for a bigger utility, that's a good sign. They didn't necessarily increase it, but they definitely maintained it, which is good, they didn't cut it. And secondly, we can see the recession return since they'd maintained it and didn't increase it. It leads me to believe, hey, how much did the share dip? Okay, cool, almost 50%, right? The recession returned during that time period, but then you have to factor in the dividends, compounded and reinvested if it's maintained at the same amount. So you actually are able to buy more shares because the payout pretty much didn't really change. It was just the share price. So that's kind of like a Black Friday deal. Over the last 20 years, hasn't been the best growth for dividend growth. It's really picked up though in the last five years to have a 6% year over year average. So I like to see that, that they're picking up the pace there, getting more established. It is a qualified dividend, just like the last one. Pretty much all of these are going to be a 1099 qualified dividend. Um, and then Basically, like we were saying, this one is slightly undervalued as well. It's just about on par, a slight value, if that. And then we have the earnings per share have gone up nice and steady, which is what we also like to see as an indication of the uh, company's strength. And then we see the shares outstanding has gone up slightly over time, and that's also due to more expansion, right? As you can imagine. So if we saw a huge spike in shares outstanding, then that would be a sign of dilution. And maybe this company is either going under, et cetera. And it's just a bad sign when a company is trying to issue a lot of shares. It's kind of like the Fed or the Treasury issuing a lot more dollar bills, right? It makes them worth less. So something to note. So if you see that, buyer beware always. And then we see the return on equity is actually better than the last one even. And we see the operating margin is actually better than the last one. Um, not saying the last one's bad. PGE is a good one. This one is definitely even bigger and more established, but it's good to diversify in your areas that you own all these companies. It's kind of like Monopoly. You don't want to own them all in the same area because let's say one area uh, people move to more so than others, right? Especially right now where people are you know, relocating based off of uh, tax structure and all kinds of other things. So you always got to look at that. So it's good to diversify always in location and also in, in, in the industry that you're investing in. We see the interest coverage is also um, also on par here, so it's like what we like to see. Overall, pretty good company, very solid. Uh, definitely consider adding them to the portfolio. If you guys are curious, like I said, they're already in my portfolio. You can get it for free, it doesn't cost anything. You can you know, open an M1 finance account, or you don't even have to do that. You can just literally take the account, and copy it into your other brokerage if you want it. All right, well, let's check out the next one. All right, guys, the next one is Watsco. And they focus mainly on uh, like the material side of the house when it comes to these. Um, it's a distributor basically of like products and certain things for utilities. So they are considered in the industrial sector though. The dividend yield starting is at 3.07. And they also have a starting price today of just over $286. And that market cap is a little less than the last one. 
greater than the first one at a 10.1 billion market cap currently. Nice dividend growth right here, right? And we can see here, mainly this rating I think is probably given because it's more of a discretionary kind of thing in the sense that they do um, the utility side of the house, air conditioning, heating, refrigeration, etc different parts and stuff, right? They do compressors. These are all things that are obviously needed, whether times are good or times are bad, things always break, right? But they are more of the industrial side of the house. So if new buildings and stuff aren't getting built, you mainly just have the consumerism from older buildings needing repaired and stuff. So that's kind of why, but overall solid company, uh, especially if we look at some of these metrics. So we see their forward P has crept up a little at a 73%. That's probably also due to the rising prices of everything with inflation and shipping prices, hard to get things. Uh, but like I said, that some of those costs will definitely be passed off to the consumer. So I don't see that changing too terribly much, even though the price of everything is going ballistic. But we can look here and see the dividend streak is almost 30 years now, it's 29 years. And they did increase their dividend payout during 07 and 09, which is another great indication. And we see their recession return is actually not too terrible. And we see, I really like to see this in February of just this year, 2022, they increased that dividend growth rate by 13%. So even though we're seeing high inflation with dividend growth rate plus compounded growth plus uh, dividends reinvested, you're definitely getting a mid to high double digit return with this one. Over the last 20 years, it's performed even more stellar at a 24% compounded year over year dividend growth rate over that term. Very great. So we see here, uh, also overall, right, uninterrupted dividend streak, 29 years, and they've increased with consecutive high increases for the last eight years. That's another great sign to the company's fundamentals. So dividends don't lie, guys. If a company is able to pay out dividends and continue that for year after year after year, it's a sign that the company has good fundamentals and is also in a good marketplace as well. If a company had poor fundamentals, poor sales, poor metrics, they wouldn't be able to maintain it very long, even if they tried to pay more. So that's a good metric to look at as well for your future reference. And then we see it also, all these are quarterly, by the way, these are all going to report out four times a year. So whatever you see is the annual payout, you divide it by four, and that's going to be your payout every quarter. So every, uh, you know, three months, right? So there's 12 months in a year, divided by four, it gives you three months. Every three months, you have a payday. And then we see the X dividend, right? It is 1099, just like I was saying. And the cool thing about this is, is, well, cool and not, right? Great company. It is a little richly valued. So that could be a little bad, but, you know, maybe not as cool. But that's to the industrial sector as a whole. Since they focus on so much utility side of the house and selling like equipment, yes, they are industrial, but I would also classify them as a utility in some regards because they work so closely with the utilities. Okay, now we see, like I said, earnings is a little, it's getting getting up there, right? But they've in, decreased over the last few years, so that's a good sign that it did. And also, like I said, they have almost a 30 year track record of increasing their dividends. So they definitely don't want to you know, lose that. So the company is speaking to growth. Look at the re earnings per share alone. They, that earnings per share right there chart is amazing, guys. Very phenomenal. So earnings per share has creeped up uh, very nicely. So that's another good thing for us dividend investors, since that's compounded so much, that's going to also grow our dividend as well. Okay. We see the earnings per share has also gone up over time. You know, had a huge jump this past year. And then we see the shares outstanding also are, you know, definitely in line and not terrible considering we factor in expansion for the company. And we see the return on equity has been very phenomenal, pretty stellar. And we see the operating margins not bad either. And then we see the interest coverage, guys, and this one is phenomenal. So this company has uh, quite a bit in reserves, believe it or not. So this tells me it's a good sign for the company fundamentals and kind of where they stand on longevity. So they're not going to go anywhere anytime soon. Definitely recommend them. Like I said, link down below my portfolio. Um, but it's very neat, good company. And also, if you do happen to go with M1 Finance, they do do a deal to where if you use the link down below, right? Basically, uh, and you deposit a certain amount of money, 
right? Usually it's a hundred dollars. It depends on the promotion and the time you're watching this and if things change, but it could be as much as $50, uh, just from, you know, doing like a hundred dollar deposit or a couple hundred dollar deposit, uh, or a $500 deposit. If you're doing a retirement account, not bad at all. So definitely check it out guys. Um, and like I said, you don't have to use the link below. You could literally just sign up. But when you use the link below, uh, it enables, you know, obviously, you know, I would be able to get something. But the nice thing is it allows you to actually get something as well. So like I said, that doesn't cost you anything. So check that check that out, guys. M1 Finance is a very cool platform. I found them a few years back and I haven't looked back. All right, guys, this one is going to conclude this video since I already see it's getting a little long. And I'm just going to do this shoot in multiple videos. It's fine. No big deal. But this one is ticker symbol NEE. This is Nextra Energy, one of the world's largest utilities, actually. I already know just off the top of my head from my research into this company. Very good, very sought after company. Started yield is a little less than the others, but you're talking also very solid. It's 2.12% uh, starting yield, but they have a really good growth to them. And that market cap is much bigger than the others. And that's at $158 billion, And that starting price is just over $80 a share. Right. And basically, they do generation, transmission, distribution. They sell a large amount of electric power to retail and wholesale customers across all of North America, not just states, but we're talking North America as a whole. And like I said, they generate this through, uh, this company is actually pledged to go pretty much all green here in the next uh, few decades, actually, or less, actually. I want to say it's 2035. I think they have a main pledge. Don't hold me to that one, but it's close. And they do a lot more stuff with wind and solar, especially now. And also they're looking at into nuclear as it can be very clean, the burn rate and everything, as long as it is controlled pretty well. They also have a lot of natural gas facilities. So this company does a lot. And since they do a lot, I would expect nothing less from their balance sheets. So that forward PE is decreased from 61 to now 60%. We see they have maintained and increased their dividend growth streaks through 26 years, increasing that payout during the 08 recession as well. So that's another good sign to the company's fundamentals. They have over a 20 year compounded dividend growth rate of 9% year over year. Very phenomenal considering this one has had a good share price appreciation as well. And we can see it's actually increased over the last few years and it increased this year by 10% more as well. So it's another great sign. So payouts are going up. PE is good. And we also see the earnings per share has gone up a nice steady amount, snowball amount, which is going to help us as dividend investors as well. So we get a share in that profit and the earnings per share, same thing. And the shares outstanding, obviously have gone up a little bit over time. And that's also because of the expansion that this company is doing as well. We see, we want to look at the operating margin. So that's a good sign as well. Return on equity, return on equity has been down just a little bit over the last few years, but they have also been doing a lot of expansion too. So that costs money as well. Um, but also the share price, they appreciated a lot over the years. The last couple of years, it slowed down a little bit, but that dividend growth rate sure hasn't. And we can also see their total sales as well. Those have increased and stayed pretty steady over time. So that's another good sign. You don't have sales, you don't have business, so always good to look at. And we see the interest coverage is just about on par, so not too bad. This is a great company to look at. Um, it actually has another one, it's uh, NEP ticker symbol NEP, just off the top of my head, NEP or NEP, however you want to pronounce it. Um, but like I said, both are very good. And uh, these are all great companies. Obviously, I own them in my own portfolio. I wouldn't tell you guys otherwise. And over the next decade, I highly believe, maybe even the next few decades, utility sector, uh, not to mention commodities, but utility sector is going to be very bullish, even longer term than commodities, obviously just because of all of the new green energy and everything coming here in the future. And the power grid that need to get upgraded heavily for all the new electric and everything else. As you know, there's a lot of upgrades to do. So this is gonna be a huge driving sector um, just in the future. So highly recommend you check the utilities out. There's a lot of legendary investors out there as well that say that the utility sector is going to be one of the bullish, 
most bullish markets over the next uh, coming few decades. So don't just take my word for it. You can also do your own research, always. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit that like button. It really helps push this out to more people. I want to spread this message of wealth and entrepreneurism, dividends, real estate, and keeping you informed on economics to a lot of people around the world and be able to, be able to you know, make some amazing entrepreneurs out there and really change the way you think about money. So if that's something you like, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time. You let me know how it is.